This is the PX Malian Mini 3D printer, and yes, that's its actual name. At 135 US dollars, it's among the cheapest 3D printers on Amazon, not named the 101 Hero. But how well does it actually work? I'm Nathan, and today we're taking a look at PX Malian's smallest 3D printer offering, the Mini. As a disclaimer, I purchased this printer as part of PX Malian's review program, where I provide an unbiased review in exchange for compensation for the printer, and only the printer. I should also note that Thingiverse links to all of the prints featured in this video are available in the description below, as well as an Amazon link to the printer itself, and if you use that link you will be helping out the channel. The Mini features a build area of 120 by 120 by 150 millimeters, slightly bigger than that of the Monoprice Maker Select Mini. It features a cantilevered x-axis, uh, which is a design that initially I was a bit worried about, but that quickly became the least of my worries. All of the parts are made of either sheet steel or injection molded plastic, which is quite rare for a printer of this price, until you realize that all of those injection molded pieces are actually shared with another of PX Malian's printers, the T320. The bed y-axis uses two standard LM8UU linear bearings on 8mm rods, and in my case, the bearings had a lot of play in them, making printing impossible without replacing them with better fitting bearings. The Z and X axis use bronze bushings in lieu of linear bearings, and I found that mine caused all sorts of issues with binding for both axes no matter how much of the supplied oil I used. The stepper motors, drivers, and electronics board all seemed to be of pretty good quality, but the scre screen would jumble up far more often than I would have liked. Though firmware updates made this less of an issue, by resetting the screen every 5 seconds. I should also note that this printer will be PLA only as it has no heated bed. Assembly was fairly painless and only took about 20 minutes to get everything put together as per PX Malian's instruction manual. Issues came up immediately as I discovered how wobbly the bed was due to the bearings. Luckily I had a spare set to press fit in more snugly. Uh, this, this still wasn't perfect but it was still fairly usable. On the initial prints, I tried using the auto-leveling sensor that's included, but every time it would auto-level the bed, uh, the bed would press down before the sensor would activate, so the first layer would dig into the bed pretty bad. Now this could be slightly remedied with offsets, but it was such an imperfect solution that it was just easier to forego the auto-leveling and use an old-fashioned paper leveling method. What followed was a long, long process of trying to get this printer to make anything worthwhile. I could get the printer to lay down a flawless first layer. It printed the bottom layer of several benches, but at some point most of the prints gave up in one way or another. Whether it was under extrusion, uh, which was likely caused by the version of Cura that I was using at the time, layer shifts, or simply stopping partway through a print for no apparent reason. The layer shifting was the most irritating part because of the design of the x-axis. The gantry is designed in such a way that the force from the belt is not applied to a spot remotely close to the center of the two bushings. And cheap bushings, having more friction between them and the rod than cheap bearings, have a tendency to bind when loaded in such a way. Now, PX Malian was kind enough to provide a small bottle of oil to keep the rods and bushings lubed up, but even when fully oiled up, there's still some friction between the surfaces. The result is circles that are out of round and in some cases some pretty impressive layer shifting. There's a similar problem in the z-axis that results in the plastic gantry bending and then releasing when the friction is overcome. The result is these striations due to the layers being too close together and then too far apart. It takes almost constant oiling to make sure neither of these axes become too much of a problem. Even when I used white lithium grease, I couldn't make this issue go away. I should also mention that at some point, I ended up with a damaged nozzle. It actually ended up with a hole in the side of the nozzle, uh, so that needed to be replaced. I don't know what caused it. This dragon here was actually the first full print that I got to work, and honestly, it didn't turn out all that bad. Some of the supports failed, and that's noticeable by part of the wing missing. And the layer adhesion is subpar as well, but better than all of the previous attempts. And that's not the only full print I was able to get off this machine. This 3D Hubs Marvin came out decent with some of the striations as you can see as a result of the z-axis binding problem. The same can be seen on this 150% scale rook, but a lot more noticeable due to the vertical surfaces. 
and the underside gives a nice visual of that inability to create accurate circles. This spiral vase turned out okay, but again, some sort of banding in the Z direction, I'm not sure what caused that. So now, let's get down to the brass tacks. Pros? At $135, this machine is very inexpensive. It has 32-bit electronics, which is extreme overkill in this case, and assembly is straightforward. It implements, or attempts to implement, recent common features like mesh leveling and filament detection, the latter of which worked really well. Quality of the electronics and steppers seems to be good, and it's a very compact design as you can see. As for the cons, it has binding in both the X and Z axes due to the bushings. Wobbly Y axis due to play in the linear bearings, the screen has communication issues, the auto leveling didn't work that well, you have to use tape, and they sell a build tax style print surface separately, which is a bit confusing. The firmware is closed source as far as that I can tell, even though the website says it's based on open source, and a few things that it doesn't have. There's no heated bed, no print cooling fan, which is strange for a PLA only machine, no spool holder, no on off switch, no included micro SD card, and no control of the heatsink cooling fan, so it does get really loud. So would I recommend this printer? Generally, no, not really. If this printer were designed to use standard linear bearings on all axes, it would probably solve all of the issues with the binding and make this a completely usable printer. If you really want a super cheap 3D printer and you're okay with having to maintain a printer mid-print, keep all of those linear rods fully lubricated, keep spare parts on hand, and you're immune to the noise of a 40mm fan at constant full blast, then by all means, get this printer, but understand what you're getting into. If you're serious about getting into 3D printing but still on a budget, I'd recommend something more along the lines of a kit like the Creality Ender 3, or if you don't want a kit, then the Monoprice Select Mini V2. Both of these printers will cost around $45 to $50 more than the PX Malian Mini, but they open up a lot more capabilities. So that's it for this video. If you want to see more reviews like this, as well as future 3D printing projects, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. I have at least two more reviews in the works, as well as a handful of projects for the future. So just as a bit of an update, as I edit this video, um, PX Malian has reached out to me and uh, said that they have a new version of the firmware, which helps with the character garbling on the screen, um, as well as they're going to send me a new uh, connector piece for the x-axis. So if that helps out, um, expect an update video in the future, um, regardless of the outcome.